In this Knife Talk video, I'm gonna be talking more about this knife. This is the Isham Blade Works Black Star. Um, and to give some background on this knife, this is a knife designed by Elijah Isham, and uh, it's the first knife, I believe, on under his own brand. So if I open it up here, you can see that mark, that's his brand, Isham Blade Works. And uh, Elijah Isham is one of the more popular uh, knife designers right now. He's done collaborations with a couple different companies, but especially We Knife Company. And that's who made this knife. But again, I think, as far as I can tell, this is the first knife that he has done actually under his brand, his own brand, rather than a collaboration. Um, but this knife is made by We Knife Company. It is a Chinese made knife, but it's a really, really cool knife for a few reasons. So to start out here, uh, I'll talk about the inspiration for this um, knife. So Elijah Isham on his Instagram said that the inspiration for this knife was he was talking with uh, Justin Lindquist after Blade Show, I believe, this year, and uh, about how uh, there's been a resurgence in popularity of the traditional, or I think he said gentleman style knives. And what he meant by that is these kind of knives. So these are all GSC knives, and I'll talk about why I have them out here later. But there's definitely been a resurgence in the popularity of slip joints. And uh, the second thing that he talked about was the fact that there's been kind of an emergence in popularity of front flippers. So the first thing I'll talk about here is those two design aspects. So to start out here, uh, this definitely has the, the look, I think, um, at least uh, in several ways of a traditional knife. But more importantly, it's a slip joint in the sense that it's non-locking. So you open it up, and you can hear that it kind of has a snap that might sound like a, a liner lock engaging. But if you look inside, there's not actually a liner lock. There's nothing that's holding it open. If I push on it, it does close. Um, but what it is, is if you look inside here, there's a bar. And that bar it has a detent ball attached to it. So it sp has spring tension. And when the knife is closed, just like any other liner lock or frame lock, the, the bar there has a, a, I believe, ceramic ball on it that is pushed into a cutout, a, a circular cutout, um, in the, the blade. That holds it closed, and then you can open it, and you can, it has uh, long pulls on both sides, as you can see. You can definitely open it with the nail nick or the long pull. And then it has the same thing when open. So there's no lock, but again, that detent ball is pushed. You can see the detent ball there right above my fingernail that's pushed into a hole in the blade that holds it open. Now it's definitely a little different than your traditional slip joint which has a back spring because as soon as you break that tension of the detent ball, there's no pressure uh, on the back on this side of the tang of the knife. The pressure uh, from that detent ball and the spring is pushing in this direction. So what that allows for is it allows for something that you can't do with a traditional backspring knife so again to show you that when you open the knife there's constant pressure on the tang because of the backspring and if you go to close it even here I broke that main point but there's still pressure in it and it snaps it close so that's not the case with this when you open it, it just has the same uh, kind of ease of opening all the way till it opens and same thing closed but one really cool thing about that is that it allows this knife to be a flipper so unlike any knife like this with a backspring, um, it can be a flipper. And that's really, other than the very cool looking design, the first thing that I noticed about this knife. It flips really well. Um, so this is the flipper tab. And you really, you have to do a light switch style. So I can't just push it down because you can see my finger actually blocks it from opening the whole way. So I have to kind of follow through like I'm flicking a light switch. But it was very intuitive. It, I flipped it open easily on my first try as soon as I took it out of the box. And um, it's it flips really, really well. Honestly, just as well as, as a lot of my, a lot of flippers that I've had with uh, a um, frame or, or liner lock. And then another cool thing, because the only thing holding it open here is that detent, is that you can flip it closed also. So same deal, light switch open, light switch closed. So you just push like that and allow your finger to extend and it'll flip all the way closed. So it makes it a really fun knife to open and close. It makes it a lot more convenient 
um, if I'm being honest, and or a lot easier to open and close than a traditional slip joint with a back spring because I don't need to worry about it snapping closed on my hand really uh, because I don't have to have my, my fingers in the way of the blade. I can just kind of flip it closed. And then I don't have to use two hands if I don't want to, to open it. I can just flip it like that and it opens really easily. It's never not uh, stopped and, and sat in the, the tent um, hole there. It's always opened well and everything. So I like that. I think it makes it really convenient. Um, and with that, with the slip joint, we'll move on to the second thing um, that was the inspiration, which was again, a front flipper. Um, front flippers are becoming more popular. I don't own any front flippers. I've tried a few in stores and I've seen ones that people have had, and I'm not really a fan. Um, so what is a front flipper? Like I say, I don't have one, so I don't have one to compare, but it's when there's a, a part sticking out from the tang of the knife on this end. So on the forward side of the pivot, uh, this is the backward side of the pivot, right? Um, backward facing. So rather than flipping it like that, what you would do with a front flipper is you would take your thumb and kind of flick it backwards. Well, it might be just that I'm not as dexterous as other people, but that just isn't a very intuitive or, or natural motion, this motion. Like this is like going down is much more natural for me. This is not a strong or intuitive motion for me. And I don't understand, to be honest, why they're so popular. Um, I do understand one point that some people make with front flippers versus normal flippers. So here's a normal flipper knife. This is the ZTO 561. Very different knife from this one in size, as you can see but it is a flipper. And one of the complaints that people have about normal flippers, which uh, I guess has led them to, to like front flippers, is this. So you can see that on a normal flipper, the flipper tab sticks out of the back. And it can look, I guess, a little bit like it breaks up the look of the knife. Not something I really care about, to be honest. But the thing that I do agree with somewhat is that with a uh, normal flipper, when the tab sticks down like that, you kind of lose a little bit of usable blade area on a flat surface. So you see that the blade doesn't actually touch until the belly or right about here. It's not something that always matters. I mean, cutting cardboard, you're not cutting on a flat area and things like that, um, but it can matter. Uh, and I can see why that would be something that people would be, you know, not fans of. I do like on a, t you know, a more tactical, a bigger knife like this that you would use for harder tasks, that the flipper tab on a traditional style flipper like this is kind of a secondary safety. The blade's not really gonna close on your finger as long as your finger is blocking that flipper tab. But anyway, that's one of the things that people like about front flippers, that they don't have that tab sticking out. Well, um, like I say, Elijah Isham said that front flippers were one of the uh, inspirations for this knife, but this is definitely not a front flipper. Um, so the only way you could say that it is if you is if you take the meaning of a front flipper to mean that the front means this end, the top. But that's not actually what it means. It means the front, so this side of the knife. This is not a front flipper. It's just a flipper with the, the flipper tab on the top rather than out here. Um, so you can see that it doesn't have that problem of sticking out, not allowing you to, to get the blade down I and mean, everything like that. So I really like that. I think that it makes for a good look. This, although it does still stick out and kind of break up the look of the knife in comparison to something like this, uh, it definitely does so less than on a traditional flipper. And um, I think that it, it is a better look uh, if, if, especially on a smaller like this, knife like this that's not going to be a tactical knife. But anyway, that's why, you know, that's the inspiration of, of a front flipper for this knife. And I think that this is actually an improvement by far, in my opinion, over an actual front flipper. I wouldn't have bought this knife if it was only a front flipper. Uh, I think that using your finger to push down is a much more natural way to open a knife or do something in general. And uh, I would probably, like I say, not have bought it if it was an actual front flipper, but that's the design inspiration anyway. And I think he did a really good job of making a flipper that uh, looks good and still functions really well. So you can see really easy to open and close this. Again, flipping in both directions. Um, so that's the front flipper part. Now, one other thing that I wanted to talk about before I got to the materials and stuff is 
what is this design actually? So it's inspired by traditional knives, but what kind of traditional knife pattern is it inspired by? Well, you can see that this is a, a clip point. This is kind of an upswept clip point, almost kind of a Bowie style. Um, if it were on a bigger knife, if this blade wasn't about two and a half inches, you could say that this was a Bowie. And he said that part of the inspiration was David Bowie, his last album, um, I have to say, I hope nobody gives me um, trouble for this, but I'm not a huge David Bowie fan. Um, I don't dislike his music, but I'm just not a huge fan. But I guess his last album was called Black Star, and so that was the, the name inspiration. And then also this is kind of a, a Bowie-style clip point. Um, so that that's the blade. But what about the handle here? So my first thought was a gun stock. So I have two gun stocks here. I have the GEC 22 Magnum and the GEC 44 Buffalo Jack. So a gun stock pattern is when, actually I'm gonna open this up so you can see it a little bit better. A gun stock pattern is when, and this is a great example, you know, another clip point with a long pull, a little bit less of an upswept clip point. But a gun stock is when it is thinner towards the top, towards the uh, bolster, and then it, gradually widens and then continues to be wider. You can see that this one actually kind of goes in a little bit past this spring pin and then opens up again towards the butt of the knife. And you can see why it's called a gun stack, gun stock. It looks like the stock of a gun, right? This is where your shoulder would be. This is where, you know, maybe the trigger would be and the barrel would start. So it looks like a gun stock. And to give you a bigger and maybe uh, even more clear example because this knife has a bullet shield um, is this pattern. So this is the 44, it's a little bigger. This one is a little bit straighter. You can see that it's uh, you know, uh, thinner up here, it's pretty straight, and then it curves, um, gets wider, and on this one, it's a little bit straighter. It's just kind of a straight and then a slight flare towards the butt. So that's a gun stock pattern. And uh, I think that this knife, the GAC 22, is pretty close so very similar looking um, handle to this knife so I'm sure if you look at these two together they look pretty similar this this uh, black star also is thinner towards the top it has that same kind of curve that forward curve uh, a little bit like halfway down the handle and it gets wider and just like this GC 22 past kind of the center line on the back of the handle it almost curves inward and then flares back out towards the butt. So really similar there, right? And that's why I initially, I've had this knife for a while and I've had another GEC 22. That's why I initially thought um, that it looked like a gun stock. But someone else said that they thought in my one minute overview, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't look again to, to remember who said it, but someone else said after my one minute overview of this knife that it looks like a dog leg. So a dog leg pattern in traditional knives is when, again, the um, upper part, the upper bolster is thinner, not as wide, and it gets, it curves forward, just like on a gun stock. But instead of on a gun stock where there's kind of a point, right, this just is a continuous, almost an S curve, and then it always also curves back slightly. Okay, so you can see that the, the difference here the gun stock doesn't curve back. It actually flares out more towards the butt of the knife. Uh, a dog leg has that same forward curve, although usually more uh, of a gentle curve or a gradual curve, and then always curves back towards the, the um, spring, towards the back of the knife. And then on the other side, same deal, kind of an S curve, gets wider towards the butt, and same as a gun stock, it curves, not all gun stocks, like I say, this one's kind of straight, but it curves outward towards the butt or the bottom bolster. Um, so that's a, a dog leg, and you can see this is the GEC number 18 Beagle. This is the GEC number 56. I don't, rec I think that they called this the dog leg jack um, when they made this the uh, in 2011, which is when this was, I believe. Maybe 2006, no, 2011. Um, but recently when they did another run, they called it the bird dog. But either way, these are both dog leg jacks. And you can see that it has the S curve. Again, goes from thinner at the bolster, gets wider as it has a more gradual curve, and then curves back. But the thing is that I think that the Black Star also looks like this. 
Um, so you can see that it kind of curves back and, uh, and does so a little bit more similarly to the dog leg. But uh, the, the point here is not as gradual as a dog leg, right? I think that the point, this curve is more abrupt and also comes to a point more similarly to a gun stock. Uh, the other thing is that this knife doesn't have that very, very prototypical, or uh, not prototypical, archetypical uh, curve downward at the uh, bottom bolster or the butt of the knife that a dog leg does. Rather, like a gun stock, it continues to curve pretty much straight on the black star, maybe a slightly forward curve. So that's why, although I can see why it would look like a dog leg jack, I do think that it is more of a gun stock pattern. Um, so that's to talk about the pattern. And I think that it's a really good looking design. Um, so just to get back to it, I think that it's a great looking design. Um, I think that this kind of small Bowie style clip point looks really good with the gun stock. And that brings me to uh, the materials. So this is, they did um, 150 of each color and they did two colors. They did this, which is black G10. It's a good looking black G10. It looks like a really high quality G10 in my opinion. And then uh, there's an inlay of carbon fiber. They also did green G10 with carbon fiber, um, but I think that the black with the black carbon fiber looks a lot better. Now, I'm not normally into inlays, but uh, being that this is a smaller knife, it's not gonna get beaten around too much. I think that an inlay on this knife uh, works fine, and I think that it does look really good. As you can see here, this is also a contoured G10. There's some contouring here, a little bit here, and then some here, and that looks good. Now, I don't know how much it adds to the ergonomics of the knife, but it definitely looks good. And then finally, one other thing here is that it does have a titanium sculpted pocket clip on the right side for tip up right hand carry. Uh, that pocket clip looks good. It is um, 3D kind of machined. It has some sculpting on it. It works really well. I've been able to slide it in and out of my pocket very easily and everything. So I'm happy with that. And that's another convenient uh, upgrade over your traditional uh, you know, slip joint knives. Um, I think that it is really, really convenient to, to know where your knife is, to have it attached to your pocket. And it's been easy for me to put this in and take it out of my pocket. Another thing here, it does have a bar, I don't know why it's not focusing, but a bar for a lanyard. I probably won't use that. I, I'm not a huge fan of lanyards, um, but it's a nice touch. It doesn't hurt the looks of the knife at all, I don't think. Um, and then one other nice, really, uh, really upgrade is that this blade is M390. And supposedly this, this M390 blade is heat treated to 59 to 61 uh, on the Rockwell scale. So that's a pretty hard, I mean, it's not super hard for, for M390, but it's pretty hard. So it should hold an edge really well. And that's what I've found so far. I've used it a good bit. I've cut some cardboard and stuff and it hasn't gotten any scratches and I just dropped it and it's back to shaving sharp and everything. Um, so. Uh, again, you know, these knives here, all of these traditional knives are 1095, which rusts and you have to kind of sharpen it more often. It's easy to sharpen, probably easier than M390, but you know, you have to put some care into it. This M390 shouldn't rust. It uh, is going to hold an edge for a long time and it's not that, that hard to, to sharpen. Um, so again, a little bit of an upgrade here. Uh, now you can see inside there is a stop pin, obviously, but it's an internal stop pin, so it just goes from, and the, there are uh, metal liners of some sort. I think that it's just like stainless steel, but those liners are what stop the pin. And then you can see also that there are phosphor bronze washers. Uh, it's not a um, ball bearing washer pivot, but it doesn't need to be. It flips super easily uh, without ball bearings. Um, I, I think the ball bearings can be nice, like, so to bring this knife back in, um, this is a ball bearing washer pivot, but I don't think that you need it. This knife accomplishes really nice flipping without that. Um, so that's, that's the materials and, and the materials are really nice. Um, to talk about the, the pricing of this knife. So this knife is again, pretty rare to be honest, especially for a production knife. Um, it's definitely more rare than this knife uh i think and 
that's probably it out of these ones. But for a production knife, basically a modern knife with traditional styling, it's pretty rare. They only made, like I say, 150 of each color. Um, so I was happy to get one. They are, it is a little more expensive than these knives. Um, so GECs um, in the past, hopefully for, it will continue this way for a while. I usually buy GECs that are between the least being a, a 71 bullnose at like $55 up to, you know, um, not including the, uh, the special knives like the Texas Camp Knife and, and uh, things like that. I guess the most about 150. Um, 150 is where uh, the, um, some of the, the whalers and stuff like that were priced. But this was $150. So a little bit more expensive than most GECs. But again, it's a, small, it's a pretty small run for a production modern knife company. It's really high quality materials. It's uh, from a pretty you know, popular uh, designer. So I think that it's a fair price, um, and especially because uh, I am really happy with how it was made. Um, one other thing, there's no blade play. I didn't talk about that at all. But, and it's uh, also centered really well. The other thing is that, boy, he did a good job of getting as much blade length into this as possible. You can see that that tip goes pretty much to the edge, but the nice thing here is that there's no chance of blade wrap because there's no spring to bounce it against, and also that stop pin. So kind of a lot of upgrades over other slip joints with the um, really the legality. So like I say, it's a two and a half inch blade. Um, it's about a 3.25 inch handle, um, but a two and a half inch blade is legal pretty much everywhere. Not something that I have to worry about all that often. I mean, I carry, uh, you know, four inch blades and things like that. There's no blade length laws where I am, but you could take this pretty much everywhere. Um, and the other reason for that is because pretty much it's a two hand opening knife. I mean, you've seen me flipping it with one hand this whole time, but it's not going to come out just by shaking it like this. And the kind of obvious way to open it would be like a traditional knife. Now, I wouldn't say that you should take this somewhere where you're not allowed to have one hand opening knives. Um, I don't know if someone in the UK would want this knife. I just don't know. Um, I'd be interested uh, to see if any of you guys watching are from the UK, if you think that this would be an okay knife to have. Um, but it's definitely legal lots of places in the United States and certainly where I am in Pennsylvania. Um, so that's another upside. Um, I've used it, like I say, quite a bit, and I think one of the concerns for people on this is the locking mechanism or the uh, the tent system. It's not really a lock. And uh, I have had it kind of start to close two times so far. One time I was cutting, I think, celery, and as I lifted it up, the tip kind of caught on celery and popped it down like that. It didn't come anywhere near close to cutting me. Uh, and also I was holding it like this, so it would have to close basically the whole way to cut me. Uh, the second time actually was cleaning my fingernails. And you know, you can see why that would, you know, make it close. It, you're pushing upward the way that a blade is not supposed to go, uh, or I was. So the next time I just did it like this with the edge facing up instead of facing down. So I haven't had a huge problem with it closing um, accidentally. But if, you know, if you're a little bit precarious or whatever, or, you know, accident prone might not be the best locking system for you. But as long as you, you know, don't push downward on the blade as you're using it, it shouldn't close. So overall, I'm really happy with this knife. Uh, I've decided to keep it at least for now. And um, I think that it probably will hold value also, which is always nice and not usually the case for a modern knife. Um, but I think that this one probably will. It's not a huge deal to me, but just something that I think on in this because of the lower numbers and the designer and everything, it, it, if I ever decided to sell it, I probably could without losing too much money as long as I keep it in good shape. Um, but I've decided to keep it for now. I've been carrying it a lot, using it, and I think it's a really cool knife. It's one that I'm glad to have gotten and a really, you know, kind of a, a success, a really strong success, I'd say, by Elijah Isham in the design of the Black Star. So if you've enjoyed this video, um, please subscribe uh, so you get updates on other videos. Like it, uh, and if you've watched this far, I'm sure you've liked the video, uh, so please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. I'm always happy to answer, and don't forget to go out and do good.